Hello boys and girls, Mr. Benson here. Welcome back to my coding series. This is video number three. Uh, today in this video we'll be using Scratch to create a very basic chase game. Uh, if you haven't checked out the first video yet, I do recommend you do that. We'll be utilizing some of the skills that we went over in that first video for this one. Okay. Uh, first thing that we want to do is we want to get to Scratch by clicking on any web browser and navigating to Scratch, which is scratch.mit.edu. Of course, if you've created a Scratch account, you want to sign in so that your work uh, is automatically saved. Uh, and ultimately, we're going to go to this Create section here. And let me close this. So today, with our chase game, we'll be learning how to, uh, or going back over how to move left and right, which was covered in the first video, move up and down, change our sprites, change our backgrounds. We're going to learn how to create a new sprite that we can chase around. Uh, we're going to learn how to play a sound uh, when we touch that sprite. We're going to learn how to add a score or a tally every time we touch the sprite. We're going to learn how to add a level up message um, and how to actually change our background to make it uh, to represent the level change. Okay. All right. First thing we're going to do here, let's choose a new sprite. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one by clicking on the trash can and we'll choose a new sprite. Uh, let's make, uh, let's, we'll do a I'm going to choose a robot. I'm going to have a robot chasing a star in space. Okay, so there's our robot. And I'm going to choose a backdrop. And our backdrop is going to be, let's do something space-like here. How about the galaxy? All right, there's our robot with our galactic background. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give the robot uh, functionality by assigning our arrow keys, which we looked at in the first video. So I'm going to say when space is pressed, and we're going to change space to a, we're going to assign space, I should say, to a directional arrow in a second here, but we're going to need four, right? Because we're going to need to uh, move right, left, up and down. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by pulling four of these out here and we'll start assigning these. Alright, so when let's say the right arrow is pressed we are going to we're going to change X and remember our X axis goes from left to right by positive 10, okay, meaning in this direction. We have a zero right here in the center Negative is going to move us left, positive is going to move us right. So uh, we are going to set, or change, sorry, change x by 10. Okay, and then when our left arrow is clicked, we're going to change x by negative 10, meaning we're moving this way on the x axis. Okay, negative 10. Then we're going to take this and assign it to our up arrow. And up and down is represented by the Y, so our Y axis. So we're going to change Y by 10. And finally, we're going to say when our down arrow is pressed, we're going to change Y by negative 10. Okay. Now, notice I didn't have, with my events, uh, we, didn't, we didn't need to use this, this uh, when the flag is clicked, right, to give our robot functionality. It's just when one of these arrows is pressed, he should do something. So let's try it out. He's moving to the left. When I press left, moving down. When I press down, moving right. When I press right, moving up, when I press up. 
So that all worked beautifully. Okay, next we are going to, uh, we will look at how to add a sprite to Chase. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new sprite. And we will choose for this example, let's give him Let's give him a star to chase. There we go. Okay, there's our star. Now we need to make our star do something. So we need to make sure that we have the star selected. Okay. And we are going to say that when our flag is clicked, we're going to use our flag for starting our game. Okay, so when the flag is clicked and now we're going to add something called a loop. Loops are very important in computer programming because a computer will only execute one command at a time and once it's done with that command it'll stop. Uh, so if you need something to repeat and do it over and over and over again uh, you would have to write that code for each instance you want it to repeat. However we have loops to help us um, make our code a little shorter, right? So we put it, we put a command inside of a loop, and it'll repeat that command for however long we specify. Okay, we could say we want to repeat that command maybe one time, two times, ten times, or we want to repeat that command forever. In this case, we want our star once we press this to continue to glide around. Okay, we don't want to catch it and then have it stop. So we're going to create a forever loop, and then within that forever loop, we're going to tell it to, to glide to a random position. And this will make more sense maybe once we click this, and you'll see what the, the star actually does. Now, this second here, this is going to control how fast our star moves around. Okay, one second. Uh, we'll see what one second looks like. Go ahead and press this. And as you can see, the star is going to fly around our screen to a random position every one second. Now, of course, like I said, if we made this faster, this would go faster and make the game harder, potentially. Let's see, 0.5 seconds. Let's hit stop and then play. And as you can see, the stars move around a bit faster now. Okay. I'm going to go back to one second for the sake of our example here. Oops. All right, just to slow it down a bit. Okay, so now we've, we've got our star moving. Let us now uh, program in a sound so that when we, when our robot touches a star, we know that we're given some sort of indication by playing a sound. So let's do this. Let's go to our robot and let's say when our flag is clicked, or in other words, when our game starts, okay, we're going to go ahead, let's add another forever loop because we want this to happen throughout the whole course of our game. Okay, so when our flag is clicked, we're going to uh, make something happen. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to add what's called a conditional in programming. And that just means that uh, this is going to continue forever uh, until something else happens. Okay, and we're going to use what's called an if statement here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this if. And we're basically saying if this happens, then this happens. So we got to go ahead and tell it what we want to have happen. Uh, we're going to go to sensing. Because now what we're going to say is if we touch the star, then something is going to happen. Okay, So let's say if touching, oop, we want this in here. Okay, We're going to tell it the star. If touching the star, then we're going to play a sound. Play sound until done. Let's choose... Um, Let's go ahead and we'll choose collect. All right, now let's run our program and see what happens now that we've added uh, these commands in here. 
And as you can see, I can chase my star every time I touch the star. It plays a little sound for us. Okay, and that's working beautifully. All right, let's move on. Now let's let's look at how we can add a score or keep tally. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to make we're going to go into variables here, and we're going to create a variable called score. Now, a variable is just like a container that holds whatever information uh, we tell it to hold. Okay, so the very first step is I'm going to go ahead and make a variable. We're going to call it score. Click OK. All right, and then we're going to add a new set of instructions, a code block for our robot. And we're going to say, when our flag is clicked, or in other words, when the game starts, okay, we're going to set our score to zero. That means if we restart our game, our, our score is always going to go back to zero. Okay, so let's go to set. score. We created this variable just a second ago, so it shows up in our menu here. Set score to zero. Okay. Then we're going to make another loop because we want this to happen all throughout our game. We're going to create a forever loop. We're going to say if we're going to do another if then conditional Okay, and here we're going to say, we're going to go to sensing, because we want to say, when our robot touches the star, something's going to happen. So, let's see, touching, let's put this in here, let's choose star, then we're going to change our score, okay, so let's look at variables here. We're going to change our score by one. So it's going to it's going to increase by an increment of one. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and play a sound. You know what I just realized? We can actually do this here. We can simplify our code here. Sorry about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna add this to our original block here. So let's do this. I'll take this off. I'll put this when this is clicked. So I'm just trying to simplify. I just realized we can just we can put all this together here. Okay, forever. With touching star, then we're going to change the score by one. And then we're going to play the sound after the score changes, just like that. All right, I can get rid of these guys. And so now, what should happen is, when we click this, the score should be set to zero. If the star is touched, the score will change by one, and we'll hear our sound. And here I can see our score changing and the sound playing, so that all worked very nicely. Okay, so that's great, but now it would be nice if we got to a certain score if we uh, leveled up. Okay, so let's look at how we can do that. Okay, the first thing that we'll do is we'll choose our, our new backdrop. I'll make sure it's something space related here. Let's go to, uh, here's a different one, Nebula. 
Okay, so now we have a second background. And now we'll go ahead and add a second uh, when clicked block. And of course, we're still working with the robot here. And we're going to, when clicked, we're going to switch the backdrop to Galaxy. That's our first one. Okay, so that, that means that every, every time we hit this, it's going to reset, right? Our score is going to reset, our backdrop is going to reset. And then we're going to, um, we're going to wait until something happens. And in this case, we're going to wait until our score gets to a certain score, let's say 10. Okay, so let's go to operators. And this will be, work nicely. We can put our score here, our variable score equals, and we can change this amount to 10. Let's pop that in here. And let's go to 10. And then let's go back to our variables. Let's take our score variable, and drop it in here. So wait until our score equals 10. Then we are going to switch our backdrop to our new backdrop, Nebula. Okay. And then what we can do is we can, just for fun, we can say, when backdrop switches to Nebula, we can Play sound. Uh, computer beep until done. All right, let's try that. Okay, and as we can see, once our score reached 10, the backdrop changed, and it played a little sound. Uh, what would be nice, though, is that if we had some sort of message that indicated that we leveled up. So, to do that, what we'll do is we're going to create a new sprite, and our sprite is going to be uh, something that we create with this paint tool here. And what we can do is just use text and we'll type the words level up there we go level up and let's make this bigger Up like that. <clears throat> and here we can see a little preview of where it's going to be and what it's going to look like. Let's move it over a bit. Let's see what it looks like there. That's good. Let me change the color so it's a little brighter. Let's go to fill here. Um, maybe like an orange. like that. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our code and we're going to code this so that it only shows up when we actually level up. Okay, so when our game starts, when our flag is clicked, we're going to hide this. Hide B. There it is. Hide. Okay, and then we're going to say when our backdrop switches. So, in other words, when we level up. So, let's go to events. When backdrop switches to 
Nebula. We are going to show. Which is under looks. We're going to show. Then we're going to wait. Maybe three seconds. And then we're going to hide it again so that it's not in our way while we're playing. Just like that. Okay? So now our game should be pretty much fully functional. Let's check it out. So just to review what should happen here when we click, um, our star should move around forever. Uh, our backdrops will switch back to galaxy. Our score should reset to zero. And let's see, here we go. Five, six, eight, nine, and ten. Everything that we wanted to have happen happened. All right. So there you have it. That's how we can quickly create a very simple chase game, tally a score, level up, switch backgrounds. Uh, that'll be it for this video. Thanks again for joining. Have fun with Scratch. And until next time, it's Mr. Benson signing off.